So can you tell me um, your journey and how you started to investigate? Because uh, this seems like a very interesting story. I I wonder where you would start. Uh, I I started from uh, uh, the end, (laughs) I could say, because I I started from the the only published work uh, uh, by Andrea Basili, the Musica Universale Armonico Pratica, who certainly is uh, his major work, but uh, it is not his only work. So uh, I began uh, from uh, from that uh, um, publication, and then uh, um, I found out uh, uh, many other uh, treatises spread uh, all over Europe and uh, in the U.S. And I tried to reconstruct uh, his uh, biography uh, and uh, his uh, method of teaching, uh, analyzing his uh, treatises, uh, his uh, letters and uh, his compositions. When you said starting at the end, do you mean by the fact that that was published in 1776 and he died, what was it, next day, one year later? Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about that book? Yes. um, This book is uh, the the first uh, uh, printed book that uh, contains uh, partimentos. And, uh, and is a, a musical uh, uh, course uh, is intended to teach uh, through partimentos and uh, um, musical uh, uh, examples uh, how to compose. And uh, it is uh, divided uh, in uh, 24 esercizi exercise, and uh, each uh, exercise has four different uh, steps or different layers and uh, so uh, in each exercise you find uh, four uh, different kind of uh, pieces the first one is uh, uh, the practice of the rule of octave so you find a scale and in the second uh, position you find uh, um, a kind of uh, exercise in a thorough bass or partimento and the third step is fugue, and uh, Basil, Basil used uh, uh, both uh, um, partimento fugues and uh, uh, written out uh, fugues. Uh, and uh, the last piece is a sonata or a capriccio, uh, so a sonata form or free form that uh, focuses on uh, music performance, uh, expression, and virtuosity. And uh, there are 24 exercises, like uh, the 24 uh, predecessor fugues uh, by Bach in uh, all the 24 major and minor keys. Right. Could you compare that with something like Fenaroli or Forno? How is it kind of different from like Fenaroli? Obviously, there's the exercises are in different keys, but uh, yeah. is this very? You mentioned fugue, so it goes. That, that's quite difficult then, right? So it's, is it for yeah. beginners and for advanced? Is it the whole, is it for everyone? Uh, if, uh, I, I was very lucky because I, I found the, the original manuscript of uh, uh, this uh, work. Uh, and, Whoa, uh, so orig- what does original mean? By his hand? Yes, yes. Autograph. Wow, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, in the autograph, uh, there's a preface, then... Uh, that uh, then uh, Basili decided to quit. Because in, in the preface, he, he, he writes that uh, this work is uh, intended for, uh, is addressed to amateurs and professional, professionals. But uh, in fact, it is a work for professional musicians because uh, uh, it really contains very difficult exercises, very high level uh, skilled uh, exercise for musicians. So I think that uh, you can uh, uh, practice uh, the the first two steps as an amateur, so the rule of of octave and the uh, thorough bass exercises, Uh, but then uh, when you arrive to the fugues, uh, it becomes very tricky. (laughs) So (laughs) you have to know... (laughs) To know what to do, and you you must be a, an expert uh, musician. Is it very difficult? I mean, like compared to Fenaroli's Partimento fugues, uh, what's the the difficulty of them? And was he a virtuoso himself? So did he? He, he was a he was a virtuoso keyboard player. Uh, there are uh, some uh, 
some uh, witnesses of his activity while he was uh, still in Rome that defines him uh, very good uh, um, at uh, the keyboard. And uh, uh, there are some uh, pieces in the Musica Universale that are virtuosic in nature, so uh, are meant to show uh, the, the ability of the, the performer. The fugues uh, are really difficult, I think, uh, somewhat, uh, some way, uh, even more difficult than uh, other um, partimento fugues. For example, uh, in the first, uh, in very first uh, exercise, you find a fugue with the hidden entries uh, uh, immediately, so you you are, you are not prepared to 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 work on a fugue. Uh, by other previous steps and uh, you have to figure out uh, without any uh, previous uh, uh, information uh, how to find out uh, where uh, to put uh, the, the subject and uh, I think that uh, even the subjects that uh, that Basili chooses uh, for uh, his fugues are quite uh, difficult and somewhat extravagant uh, you find some uh, odd intervals, so some augmented intervals in the subjects. Some subjects are made up of uh, uh, arpeggios, uh, so uh, requires uh, a kind of uh, ability, uh, digital ability to perform uh, even the subject. Uh, so uh, I think that, uh, well, uh, it's similar to uh, the Partiment of few tradition, uh, but uh, Basili has his own style that is different uh, in many features to the Neapolitan style of writing. Okay, that's a good topic because uh, he was trained by someone called Tommaso Gaffi and yeah. Tommaso Gaffi was trained by Bernardo Pasquini. So yeah. is could you say that's like a Roman tradition? Yeah, I could say that. And uh, if you analyze uh, Basili's style, uh, not only in the Musica Universale, but also in his uh, sacred music uh, work, you find that uh, there are some uh, features that uh, uh, are more similar to the style uh, of uh, the, the first uh, two decades of uh, 18th century, and uh, in some way uh, more similar to a, a Baroque way of uh, thinking music than a, a galant way. Uh, I, I explain myself. Um, many um, pieces in the Music Universale, you, you find uh, some, uh, something that uh, we could define uh, uh, extravaganzas, uh, something that uh, is uh, clearly meant to shock the audience, uh, to <laughs> amaze the audience. For example, there's a, a, a appartimento in, in which you, you find a complete chromatic scale, a raising chromatic scale, uh, and you have to uh, harmonize it uh, using uh, um, perfect chords and uh, augmented fifth chords. Uh, so uh, it, it's a, a kind of uh, harmony that uh, it's uh, rather rare to find in uh, other partimentos. Or, uh, for example, you you find a few subjects uh, that uh, span uh, uh, more than uh, an octave, so they are very very broad. They are um, they have a, a big uh, melodic extension, so it, it is difficult to add uh, um, the the inner parts when you play uh, in uh, in three parts. So. Um, in, in gallant style, you you would you expect to um, get more uh, pleased or delighted by music uh, and not uh, <laughs> amazed. <laughs> so, I, I don't know if I uh, no you yeah it. you explained it well. Yeah. Here's a question I have. You mentioned this is at the end of his life. It was published in 1776, but I read yeah. somewhere that these were composed earlier, something like 1736. Is that true? It's not true, no, uh, because it, um, it was a, a, a misreading of uh, a letter, uh, I think, by uh, the librarian of uh, uh, the, the Bologna Conservatory, Gaetano Gaspari, uh, he, who misread 1773 for 1731, 
I think that Basili began to compose uh, these pieces uh, in um, the, the 1770s, because uh, around that time he, he began to uh, organize all uh, his uh, uh, teaching uh, materials, teaching tools in a, in a sort of consistent uh, uh, method, uh, not only uh, for composers, but, but also uh, for singers. Uh, in, uh, in that time, he, he also composed a series of uh, uh, solfeggi organized in this, the same way as the Musica Universale, following uh, the order of the 24 minor and major uh, keys. And uh, yeah, it is uh, a, a reorganization of uh, his uh, teaching method and a renovation of uh, his teaching method uh, that uh, he began uh, at the end of his life. <laughs> 